President Solis, thank you so much for giving us your time. My pleasure. Costa Rica is leading the charge in renewable energy. It recently inaugurated Central America's largest hydroelectric dam, went months without using fossil fuels. What can other countries learn from you? Well, I guess uh, it's a matter of political decision. I mean, you can do all these things. If you have the natural resources, you can choose. We are now interested in exploiting our geothermal energy more than hydroelectric hydro because of, of climate change difficulties. But we do have that in our volcanoes. So if countries who have the, that, has, that have the resources, they can do lots of things. I mean, technology is available, the experience is there, and I think the advantages of uh, using these uh, kinds of, of fuels instead of, of fossil fuels is obvious. So I think, um, you know, it's, it's a question of, of vision, it's a question of, of leadership, and, in, and ult in the ultimate result, it's a matter of the, what kind of future you want your country to have. In our case, we started this 60 years ago, so it, it's been a long time in this decision. So uh, in our case, it was vision more than anything else. Some people will say, though, but you can do it because you have a smaller country, you have the resources, you can get around some of the things that these bigger countries cannot do. What do you say to that? Well, that they're right. I mean, each country has its own circumstance. And clearly, clearly there are other uh, sources of fuels that you could use, including some of the more, the more devastating ones. Uh, for bigger countries, I would advise, I mean, to look into different possibilities uh, at simultaneously. This is what we've done. I mean, we, we still have uh, a significant uh, footprint because most of our cars are not electric. They are, if, if you're using uh, gasoline and, and, and diesel. So, you know, I'm not saying that, that we ought to follow one, only one, one single model, one path. But if the possibilities are there, I would definitely uh, recommend you know, to, to see the, the integrity of the matrix and, and, and work from there. Your country has been uh, in the spotlight in recent months because it is in the middle of the migrant crisis in the Americas. Give us an update on what's happening there and how do you navigate a political balance between Cuba, the United States, and some of your other neighbors? Yeah, well, this, this latest crisis started in October with Cuban migrants traveling from Cuba to Ecuador and from Ecuador to Costa Rica through Central America into the United States. But that finished around February. And then we started realizing that there was another flow, bigger in terms of, uh, of people moving. This time we thought were Af Africans, uh, but uh, we soon discovered that they were Haitians who had been in Brazil for over six years after the er devastating earthquake that Haiti had, who had been invited by, by Brazil to come and work in the uh, preparations of the soccer uh, world championship, then the Olympics and in a situation of stability. Brazil entered into an economic uh, situation and, uh, and the jobs were gone. And so all these Asian, uh, Haitians are now moving north and uh, they're, being, uh, they're staying in Costa Rica because, well, not all of them, but, but many of them are staying in Costa Rica because the Nicaraguan government has closed its borders to, to them. So we have uh, around 4,500 of them in Costa Rica at this time. They're slowly moving into Nicaragua now, unfortunately, uh, without papers, undocumented. And we're taking care of, uh, of them using our own resources, mostly, because uh, we have not had as much international cooperation and as I, I wish we, we had had. So what would you say to some of the other countries that are involved? What is your standpoint? What needs to happen to mitigate this migration? Well, we have to articulate our policies. There's no way out without international cooperation. Somehow we have to harmonize our, our positions. My, my perspective and perspective of my government is that this is fundamentally a humanitarian issue. And yes, it does uh, present challenging uh, circumstances to, to all the countries, but uh, we have to, to realize that these are people that are being displaced because of economic reasons. And clearly it's very difficult to stop them. I mean, the ideal would be to help Haiti, Haiti their, their, uh, their mother country, to withstand and, and, and go beyond the difficult circumstances that forced them out of, of their nation to begin with. Your country is celebrating 10 years of diplomatic ties with China. Talk to me about this relationship that you have with China and what you hope to accomplish. Well, we've been fortunate of having this relationship for a decade now. Uh, I've, I've been privileged to meet with President Xi Jinping twice, 
Uh, we have called our relationship a strategic relationship. For us, it is clearly a strategic uh, relationship. We have profited from it, and we hope that in the next few years, as soon as one particularly important uh, highway is, is built uh, by the Chinese uh, by a Chinese company, Costa Rica will be able to further its uh, trade uh, relations with the world. Uh, this is a road that goes from our capital towards the Caribbean uh, area where big ports are being built. But we want to go beyond that. I mean, we have a, a series of projects that are ongoing, including a, a, an electric train that needs to be built and others. Uh, and I would like to see this relationship uh, flourish and, 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 and increase in the future. So I think we, we continue to develop it we are, and unravel this relationship. It's not an easy relationship because these are a small country versus a world power. We're very far away, geographically speaking. But on the other hand, we have found uh, a lot of uh, cooperative bonds between the two countries that I find extremely valuable. So we're very happy and I hope that this relationship will endure for many years. So you're talking about a lot of infrastructure projects. Your country is also well known for tourism. Could those projects lead to that industry? Is it helping get people around Costa Rica? Today? Well, yes, absolutely. Well, Costa Rica has already been uh, very much present in, in the world tour uh, in, in terms of, of tourism flows. And in fact, uh, after a, a slump after 2008, we have recovered significantly over the past year and a half. We are now about to receive our a three millionth uh, tourist at the end of this year, uh, I, only for, for 2016, which is a, a, a national mark. Um, so we are seeing this recuperating very, very much. Yes, we are hoping that uh, our relationship with China will deal with infrastructure, but also on geopolitical affairs. And, uh, and this dialogue should continue. In, couple of, uh, in a couple of, of, of months, we will receive from, the, from China two important uh, aircraft for our police forces, for example. That, that is a significant step forward. So tourism is not necessarily related with China, although we would like to see a Chinese tourism um, come to Costa Rica as well. We're dealing with a couple of difficulties. One is that we do not have direct flights from China to San Jose, and that's always a, an issue. Uh, during my visit to Cuba uh, last year, we explored the possibilities of a triangular relationship via Cuba. Um, so that's one thing, and secondly, that we have not had the, those flows uh, ever. So we have to prepare our hotels and our guides and in Chinese, and there are technical issues to be deal uh, to deal with. But uh, I think we can see that coming as well, and uh, to that end, we are trying to make it easier for Chinese travelers to come to Costa Rica, and that would entail some changes in our migration uh, legislation as well. You also are looking at science and technology. Uh, can you tell us about some of the projects and initiatives you're doing to, to make this a priority there? Yes, I, we are uh, absolutely willing and, and needing more investment in, in research and development. And uh, this has to be a public-private partnership. We have, so far, our universities have been mainly the ones uh, pushing forward in terms of innovation. But uh, we know that we can do much better if we can somehow integrate our uh, foreign direct investment with local development. And we are already in that process. Costa Rican universities are adapting some of, our, of their degrees and some of their uh, courses to uh, fit into the needs of, of international uh, investors. And this has proven significantly valuable for the country because there are pieces of, of machinery, for example, medical devices, you know, little components that have already been devised in Costa Rica uh, and uh, designed in Costa Rica. And I think in, in doing so, we're moving towards that, towards that end. Uh, the bigger problem, obviously, is, is financial. I mean, we have to invest uh, in innovation and in new technologies, and that's not necessarily uh, something that's cheap. But we're moving in that direction. Uh, we are looking for more associations between technical schools and universities from around the world to come to Costa Rica and use some of the facilities we have and also take advantage of our, of our talented people. We have a, a very good uh, labor force. Keeping those talented people in the country. 
Yes, which is something I'm, uh, I'm happy to, to say is already occurring. They're not leaving in, in big amounts. I mean, some of them travel abroad and, and they study, but they would come back. You have a legendary former president, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, Oscar Arias. But you also have the arrests of two former presidents uh, from corruption. How do you remove sort of this stigma that might surround the office of the president in Costa Rica? Well, you know, those, those arrests happened uh, over 15 years ago. And, uh, and I'm very happy that it happened because it proved that Costa Rica's judiciary system was work, working very well and that the uh, hand of justice would go all the way to the top. And it has also meant a revamping of the democrat democratic process in Costa Rica. In fact, I might, I might be part of that process myself. My election could be part of that. Uh, after the arrest of the former presidents, uh, the whole logic of transparency as a major political objective uh, it was, uh, was, um, became the center of political debate. And uh, so we, we had a, a very positive outcome of what could have been a disaster for us, as it was in the case of other countries, where democracy entered into a crisis that did not have a solution up until now. But in Costa Rica, the legal institutions became, became, uh, became stronger as a result of this, and the political system became refreshed by the fact that people became aware of the need to ensure, through uh, more transparency and accountability, the effectiveness of, of democratic rule. What is your outlook for your country and its place in the region? Well, it's very positive. You know, the Co Costa Rica is growing uh, at a very, economically growing at a very fast pace, m more than twice the, the regional average in Latin America. Uh, all the macroeconomic indicators, except uh, the debt, which is, continues to be a big problem for us, the deficit is around 6%, uh, are under control. We have uh, a very solid, strong, and, and, and efficient uh, so social security system, so the condition of our, of our people from a health point of view is, is correct. The environment, as you mentioned, in terms of energy, in terms of water supplies, in terms of conservation areas, is, um, is very well ca taken care of, and, uh, and the democratic institutions function. I mean, we do have our issues, and I think we're in a transition now, moving from the old welfare state into something that's still pending to be built, and I'm, I'm in the midst of that. Uh, my government comes at the point of, of that transition. But uh, overall, what I see is Costa Rica moving forward in the region, and clearly continuing to be a voice in the international system, uh, for the causes that we have, uh, that we have espoused, uh, disarmament, denuclearization, uh, the protection of the oceans, the protection of nature in general, uh, the support for climate change strategies, mitigation and adaptation. So uh, my, my overall perspective is very positive, and I hope that this proves truth, true in the next few years. President Solis, thank you for joining us on America's Now. Thank you very much.